There's so many pop stars there, it's just like, it's like a sheep dick. It's pretty weird, so I don't know anybody and they don't know me. It's a bowl. This is nice, you know. I haven't done this for a long while. It's all right, a lot of memories come flooding back. I've been pushed out of the way while people try to get to George, you know. And what is it that you've been nominated for today? The Idol Award for doing nothing for the last 20 years. <laughs> IGLE. <laughs> In the 1980s, Culture Club's meteoric rise made them one of the biggest bands in the world, selling over 150 million records. The songs in the band have stood the test of time and are as relevant as they ever were. Let's take a look at the guys in action. But during this time, George and drummer John Moss were hiding something from the public. I fell in love with him. I fell in love with George, he happened to be a man. And when their volatile relationship ended in 1986, the band fell apart and George unraveled. He literally went from nothing to heroin in about three weeks. All previous attempts to reform the band have broken down. But now, for the first time in 15 years, they're planning to record an album and go on tour. We've attempted to do it a few times and I felt like it was our last chance if we were gonna do it. The thing is with Cut was interesting is that, you know, us without George, nothing, and I'm afraid George, not as great without the band. There's no Lady Gaga without Culture Club. There wasn't even a Madonna without Culture Club. We weren't coming back and reclaim our legacy. It's our first big tour for about 15 years. <laughs> There's certain anxieties that come with that. I followed the band over 10 months as they endeavoured to put old rivalries aside. But for a band with such a volatile history, how will they cope coming back together? I know what I'm doing. I think there's the problem. You know, what I want and what Roy, John and Mikey want are entirely different things. If that means that the rest of the band kind of think I'm being selfish and difficult, that's just how it's going to be. It's really weird, you know, we weren't mates before we started Culture Club. We are a band in the very traditional sense of being a band. You know, we came together to be a band. Um, you know, pushing aside the kind of <laughs> sort of relationship things that happened. We were a band, you know, that's why we started. So our history with each other is, is about being a band. I don't live here, so for me to come over is quite a big deal. But to George, he's like, well, what are you going to do? What are you doing? That you can't come over. I'm like, well, I have a life. Well, what is it? I'm like, well, it's my life. <laughs> so. Hi, Royston. <laughs> Push. I didn't see you. You were in camouflage. Yeah. <laughs> we're ready for battle, as I said earlier. <laughs> Oh my God, if it isn't Mikey Craig. <laughs> Come in, push the gate. Okay, I was about to start starting right. you. Yeah, good. Oh yeah, good. Let's see him. Wrapping his own parcels in these days. Yeah, no, this is my Vitamix. You know what it is, Vitamix. I love my Vitamix. I live by Vitamix. It's broke. It's been so fast, it's a soup setting. It actually sort of half cooks and makes a soup when you put the things in there. With the put stems, John Moss in there, no problem. In. Put John Moss in there. <laughs> yeah. John Moss smoothie. <laughs> Could it be any more smooth? <laughs> How nice. Uh, hello. Oh, God. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to play it, Roy? It's getting old. Myself and Roy are probably the main songwriters. So, no, I mean, I think Roy might think he's in charge. <laughs> I might think I'm in charge too, but I don't think any of us are, really. Let's just move on and do something else, anyway. Yeah. Yeah. You don't remember that? They'll just take the vibe of those early Destiny's Child records. Dum, tick -tick -tick -tick. Question, where do you really do that? But just the groove on that, I thought was really kind of cool. Yeah. You know, that, yeah. swing, that swinging thing. Are you saying we're an R&B? You deny your soul voice. Absolutely not. Okay. 
That sounds like Neil Young to me now. Or oh, Jack like Melody. Please. <laughs> That's another drama. <laughs> You could do like an answer thing, right? Don't you say the man in it? Yeah. Don't fucking do that! So aggravating, man. No, 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 no. I mean, no, we don't go... start writing things because. But why not? I'm a writer. Well, then write for someone else. No, I'm writing with you. <laughs> I'm writing with you. You don't have the monopoly on melodies here. Well, George? we need to sort that out because I'm not going to be singing other people's melodies, so I'll get over it. Or... George, 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 we're, we're right together. Yeah, yeah, I write melodies, you write the music. That's how it works. Shout as loud as you like. I'm gonna make it a difference. You, well, you, you did always, shout, actually. You, you raised your voice. You raised your voice. Now I never took suggestions ever. <laughs> Don't raise your voice at me like that. That's really simple. Well, yeah, you were. I was excited, excited, excited about the music. No, you got excited about trying to tell me what to do. <laughs> Not a good idea. Doing a band, yeah. it's so much more complicated than just being a solo artist. <laughs> like we were sent a poster yesterday for the tour. And I was like, oh, I'll approve it. And then you think, oh, I should show everyone else. But it gets really complicated. Democracy, it's a hard one. Can we do this? Yeah. At the end of it, I just have to do this thing where I say, see you in December. So don't speak at the end of it, OK? Right. <clears throat> you need to go out of the thing for a minute, so you're not in it. Then come... No, no, don't go outside. You've got to be in it. Come back. OK. Come and come and come and come and come a chameleon. You come and go. Well, you have to say when he wants us to come in, you see. That's right away. When, once he does his thing, then I'll come in and you'll okay. just. <coughs> One, two, three, four. Come and come and come and come and come a chameleon. You come and go. You come and go. Nothing would be easy if your colors were like my dream. Red, gold, and green. Red, gold, and green. See you in December. <laughs> anyway, what well, next? My no. work here is done. Be quiet. No. Shut up, John. No, I will not shut up. Shut the fuck up, John. No. no. Fucking hell. Yeah, it was OK. It was as I expected today, really. George's <laughs> intolerance, as usual. So am I, probably, so that's fine. No, nothing's changed, really, so, um... I'm sorry, but he doesn't shut up. It's like fucking with him with on Matt. It's like being an insane person. <laughs> I'm finding it very difficult, unless it's one day in. I'm really good. I've just had to spray chakra spray on myself to shut... I was like, God, can you leave? <laughs> can you leave? So when are you next meeting up? we will be in Spain on, on Monday, or later. George doesn't like flying and finds ways to amuse himself. Hello there. Melbourne Airport erupted in frenzy as the pop idol arrived. Hundreds of his teenage fans screamed, wept, waved and yelled in an uncontrollable burst of emotion. But for airport officials it meant security problems. For the press of media, some of those colourful comments that always make the headlines. Do you ever feel no. trapped by your image? The waiting Mercedes didn't whisk away the superstar. Boy George had made a special request to travel in a minibus as one of the band. About 10,000 were jam-packed between the store's glass walls extending from Holton Street to Borla Place, and their thrill greeting showed how much the pub's stopover was appreciated. And you met Boy George too, and you yes, said he's I a did. really nice guy. Very intelligent, very considerate fellow, actually. That's good, isn't mm. it? Appearances aren't everything, are they? Hi, we're in Grenada, Grenada. Can't believe you brought me to here. <laughs> Come into the casa. Hello. What do you want, Reggie, in here, or do you want Johnny? No, are you crazy? I want Johnny anywhere near me. Because this is your room. Okay. Which Lots is of people sleeping here. This can be a spare no. bedroom, but it's empty at the Keep moment. Keep away from me. So it's like you've got a suite. Don't put John, don't put Richie there. It's put fine. Richie I there. I think yeah, Richie yeah. kind of likes solitude. Yeah. John just likes talking. Yeah. Fucking ha ha. Fucking hell. You guys are going to get out. Thank you. Thank you. Oh Muchas my gracias, God. Crazy. Local. Richie, move back. This is insane! Oh my gosh! <laughs>
Your entrance is very LA, I have to say. Oh my god! Oh my god! <laughs> Good cherry as well. Mm. I've already got my own room. I'll show you got the big golden suite. No, it's fine. <laughs> Nothing special. Yeah. Oh, that's good. So, where are the bedrooms then? You ain't got one, you gotta sleep up here. <laughs> Can I have the Hobbit room? Um, or has somebody already taken it? <laughs> that's what George wanted. Oh, that's cute, isn't it? Oh, I like it's that. It's a big round Hobbit room. Yeah. It's a really good acoustic. Mm. Why are these people in my room? Yeah. Why are these people in my grill? Very nice. Okay, and, uh, right, can I show you the studio? What is that? Well, it's going to put you and John in the guest house. It's spooky out here. Hope you got your flashlight out. Hmm. You're not sure you don't want to be out here? Oh, you're going to stay here, yeah? Sure? Yeah, well. It's up. It's fine. It's lovely. It'll do. Nam yo renge kyo. 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 Just warning, I haven't quite woke up yet, although I've been up for a while, but also it's quite a lot of reverb on my voice, so. <laughs> Got a floppy ring, dear. <laughs> it can be easy, hell yes it can, if you be a different man, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, that's the lyric. So I'm not needed for a minute, right? I'm gonna we'll come go. back tomorrow. You, you <laughs> if you be a different man. Yeah. We've just been picking cherries. Very glamorous. It's very what's it called? The good life. She you actually picked those. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, she wanted to. We basically went to this place where you can pick cherries. All right, let's rephrase. <laughs> and then she wanted to pick cherries, and I was like, no, we've got an album to make. They've picked them already. How nice of them. Let's go to the studio and see what's going on. Do you want to be the bearer of cherries? Should I bring them? Make me look all organic and loving, yes. like I care. Yes. I do, obviously. It's a bit low, Michael, what are you trying to do? I know we're old, but... So is this what you were doing last night? Like? Yeah. <laughs> Very dusty. <laughs> No, it's Just if you be a different man, it's yeah, not better man. Did you once say no, that? never. Yeah, he's right. All right. If you be a different yeah. man, don't Go change my do lyric. Hello. If you be a different man, not no, better man. Okay, okay. we we'll do it again. Mm -hmm. Go on, jump in. Well, listen, you know what it is. Tell you See how you. calm I've remained. What about? We could do it again or leave it as an idea. No, no, it's not. It's, it's on, different man. Okay. okay. Different do man. Do don't change my lyrics. So this is what's going to happen when I go out to the shop, you're going to change my lyrics. It's not going to work. Really little ideas. Yeah, but different. Don't change the lyrics, OK? Yeah, I missed that. That's right. No, we, we, made, we just thought this word is word. You know what thought did? Wet yeah. the bed and thought we were sweating. My mum used to say. OK. In an well, Irish accent. Like All right, wet the bed and thought we were sweating. Don't make faces about my mum. Go on. I... Nice try. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, you know, it, it, there's going to be rows because, you know, the nature of trying to have a democracy is so hard. Daddy, oh, daddy, oh, 
if there's a key change, you like it or not? Like that? Should it do the key change there? Yeah. Well, yeah. you know, if it turns out when we listen to the whole song back that yeah, it sounds yeah, too yeah, soon, which yeah. it might do, yeah. we'll change it. Yeah, yeah. You know, that's I better, just... Roy. That kind of attitude, not like no. The kind of rule is that the writer of the lyrics and the melody gets 50%, which is what I'm entitled to, but we'll have debate about that, I'm sure. But I'm not sure how flexible I'm going to be. You just have to be fair. And if somebody's written most of a song, why should they give it away? You know, I am a generous person, but, you know, there's a limit. Back in the day, we did everything 25%, but that ain't going to happen now. Did you record it? I did. Um, oh, that one right there. Oh, no. Make a note to yourself, get rid of this later. We're going to have a shot of Roy crying at the end in a wheelchair. That's nice. Finish again. With a keyboard on his lap. Naked. George, he still has the authority. He's still the queen. He's still the queen bee, although it's not taken so seriously now. I don't know about you, but I'm about to slip into something more comfortable, nice. like a coma. Fucking hell. Right, nice. Oh, yeah. Nice with some strings, a little Yeah, vocal. no, exactly. Yeah. It's pretty... Right what up, up his Beatles. ass? No. Think Beatles, man. <laughs> Think Beatles. It's very Beatles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, OK. Attack, yeah. All right, then. Uh, what, you've run me over. <coughs> Did you record it? They made the announcement today about the tour. 15 dates in the UK. Big venues. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like the O2, you know. Yeah, but, you know... We're a big band. <laughs> there we go. Somebody saying book their tickets for Leeds. Wow, really cool. That's 12 we've sold. <laughs> <laughs> My bags are packed. <laughs> Away we go. Oh, I'm busy that night, I can't do that one. <laughs> When it all kicked off, I was about 22, yeah. There's quite a lot to take on board. It is, but it doesn't mean anything now. It's like, you know, when I, like, you know when you go on TV shows and they introduce you and they say, oh, you sold 150 million records, I always just think, what does it matter? Now is all that matters. You know, rather forget it. <laughs> the first single we put out did nothing. The second one did nothing. The third one, we decided to pay for the um, promotion ourselves, didn't we? Which is do you really? And then it just suddenly kicked off. But it was. Cool. Johnny had a plan. Yeah, Johnny did have a plan. Go yeah. record, do, do a few gigs, at top of the pops, big hit record, lovely. Go and talk. <laughs> Love it. I'm like, sounds good to me. Yeah. Get a bad drug hang, let's get to force. <laughs> <laughs> and then end up making a record in you Spain. You left that bit out. You left that bit out. <laughs> I left it out. I wasn't so sure about that. John and George, they were the powerhouse within the band. They, they kind of led the band. And, and they were very strong, the, the two of them, together. And, and because they were together, it made it difficult for us to input things at times. But um, I'm not sure, I don't know if I want to talk about their relationship so much because, because John's got kids now. I fell in love with him. I just fell in love with him. I fell in love with George, he happened to be a man. We were instantly attracted to each other. It was sexually, it wasn't, it was like a sort of childish crush thing. It was, quite, it was very exciting. Oh, that's very, you know, it's very exciting, isn't it? It was a little weird being in a band with that secret. I've got to be honest. I mean, it was no secret, you know, our relationship between my friends and, you know, my parents or anything like that, but I was just thinking that the other day how things have changed so much. When Culture Club started it, there wasn't the liberalism there is now. You know, there's a lot of queer bashing, basically, you know, and it was not cool. People didn't want to know. I grew up just wanting to be in a band and have fun. All the girls backstage and all the things that go with it, I ended up in the fucking homosexual drama. <laughs> John and I did not have a normal relationship. We weren't nice to each other. We didn't go out for meals. I mean, the relationship wasn't the problem. The fighting was a problem, you know? There had been stuff going all over the place, and literally hitting each other and screaming, shouting. You know, the others were going, oh, I can't take this anymore. One couldn't help but feeling that George's mood was determined by how he was getting on with John. It's like a soap opera, you know, a really bad one that doesn't get aired after three series. <laughs> That's what it was like.
Just it's just a little experiment. I just do this every day. What are you talking about? <laughs> I quite liked it when it was a bit more dense, though. Yeah, yeah. maybe you need something here. Yeah, Christine. Like a crystal or something. Yeah. Just eccentric. <laughs> I'm just and also, you know, when you kind of worn as much makeup as we have, there's fun new ways of putting it on. No, I don't like that. It's ridiculous. Yeah, the ridiculous. reason why that you don't like it is because it hasn't got gold leaf that side. No, I don't so like it because I think it's just. No, I, don't, I just don't like it. Think it's no, too it's much. It's good. No, it's yeah. good. No, Christine, it's not. <laughs> what if the band will like it? Probably not. We could go and ask their opinion. Yeah, shall I? Yeah, no, I'm not going to do that. I say, look, I'm thinking this is. Actually, yeah, let's do it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure it's going to go down really well. Oh. Guys! Yeah, you ready to do the beat section? We thought we'd do this new look for the band. <laughs> What's this? Wow! Lovely. Nose guard. Lovely. Can you do the original melody on the beat sessions for us in a minute, George? Oh, I'm not going to do it now. I've, I've got, like, <laughs> things on my face. Can we just play Planning to Rock? So great. Rock so seconds. the makeup girl arrives and we get no more vocals because George Darris <laughs> things on his face. Yeah. <laughs> Priorities have changed. Yeah. Priorities have changed. John, oh, yes. should we pull the screens back, show them that they were really in Shepparton? Yes, absolutely, yes. It's blue screen, it's blue screen. <laughs> and one more for safety. All right, good. Email that to me. Right. This one. No, 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 where's no, George? Where's right. his community dining stuff? What's going on, really? Mm. everyone. Loch Iam. No. OK, guys. You're going to drop that and use back if you don't. Veggie one or the regular one? It's the regular one. Go and eat your dinner elsewhere. You're ruining this perfect shot of Boy George. There's nothing perfect about this. Tinnitus. 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 Not tinnitus. Of course it is. What are you saying? with ketchup. There's anything. Do you say tomato? Do you say migraine or migraine? There's that lovely moment when people aren't speaking because they're about to fall. Do you say aluminum or aluminum? And they start again. Of course I'm aluminum. It's got an eye in it. Do you have nicknames? Yeah, I love that. No, I call him, yeah. Do we have nicknames? Joan Moist. Rowena Hay. Joan Moist. Rowena Hay? Joan Moist. Rowena Hay. What's my game? It's not really imaginative. We've got to come up a bit more. Oh, she's getting all bitchy. Hello, fuck off. She's getting all bitchy. What's your nickname, George? Gina. Georgina. Definitely Georgina. She's still a nice bunch of guys. Nice bunch of guys. Excuse me, John Moss. I'm a nice bunch of guys. Nice bunch of guys. The best thing about this band, we're the only band with two singers. You never find a Georgina. Any given night. And we've got a. Musical director nice. person who's, who's like Stalin and Pol Pot rolled into one. John, see this? <laughs> no, you. Oh, oh <laughs> Me and Roy get on very well, actually, considering. Hmm. Don't we? Yeah, absolutely. I've been to his house. Blimey. You haven't been to John's house, though? No, or, or uh, my kids. Yeah. My house wouldn't kids. have given that away. <laughs> the last time I went in your house, I had to go through the garage <laughs> in a Cortina. Yeah, you did, that's right. <laughs> he drove his car into your house. Yeah, lime green Cortina, I remember. <laughs> he then got attacked sounds... by a very small hammer. It sounds like a country <laughs> song. True. I drove Cortina. my car into your garage. <laughs> anyway, you're not supposed to be It was a sort of gay like... mugging. <laughs> <laughs> a tiny little hammer. Get fuck off! Anyway, <laughs> I'm serious. Ask Matt Horn. When you want to have a sensible conversation about something, I'll come back. <laughs> Going, George. Hang on a minute. Sorry. Wasn't he the one who just brought that conversation up? He brought up. He brought <laughs> so up going to John's I house. So much about and He brought up feelings and he left. <laughs> what? No, Michael. George, uh, no, no, no. George brought up. No, the I was actually talking. No, no. George brought the conversation up about going to your house, coming to your house. Yes. And then yes. he didn't like it and he left. You like to keep a bit of distance. Between. Yeah, I like being separate. I'm an outsider. When I'm dressed up, it seems to bother them. I don't know. Do they react differently to you? When yeah, they do. Well, people do act different to you when you're dressed up. Anyway, I mean, people do, but you don't expect people that you know to, but they do. Yeah, it's kind of like who she thinks she is, you know, because John did say to me tonight, why are you dressed up? Like, there has to be a reason. Not really. He was all right. It wasn't about me, that, anyway. Yeah. Everyone's having such a drama about him. You really pissed George off. I'm fucking pissed George. You just pissed off them to do with me. Yeah. Basically, I'm here to work. I'm not here to make friends or have dinner or play card games or any of that shit. <laughs> So weird, this man. By the time Doctor Mitch come, we're probably falling out again. <laughs> so you just don't know. So you might not ever near it, you know. Well, this is about, I better come out quickly. I'm telling you, it's only a small window with us. You know, you have to wait another twelve years.
In a situation like this where you're in a beautiful place but you're also quite trapped, I mean, I like to go out and have a coffee and walk around and I like to be a bit freer, so it, it's slightly difficult for me to be here. But, um, you know, we'll get round it. Come on, <laughs> Right. Tonight, we are men. Roy's acting. Real Madrid. Roy's acting. He's gay. He doesn't like football. <laughs> Atletico. <laughs> oh. <laughs> bueno, bueno. So oh, fucking, I'm so pissed. What? Hello. So, Hello. And you've got an email today. Mike. Yeah, I just got an email from, um, from Peter Katzis, our manager. And the email says, hi, guys. These figures look fantastic. Apparently, we've sold 18,000 tickets. In the first day. In the first day, which is amazing. Excellent. Yeah. Absolutely amazing. It's good fun, it? I thought it was just me. I could not sleep the night before we came. I was really anxious about who's going to feed the goldfish and my dog and my kids and, you know, all that crap. But really, it was anxiety about where am I going, what's it going to be like, is it going to be comfortable, you know? You know, did I remember my hand cream? Sort of, you know. And an anxiety about, you know... There was anxiety about being, of course, but, yeah, you know, if you're someone like this and you, someone's really getting on your nerves, I mean, it's really bad. And when you're older, you think, I don't need to do this. Oh, I don't need to put up this. I think it's a webbing. Yeah, but, I mean, there's something else you need to get out of the trunk, darling. <laughs> <laughs> she could have dressed for the match. <laughs> the other one's legs, man. Pretty girl, Jesus. That's all I need. Look at this little That's Renault. Where's your little Renault? This one right here. Fucking crap, mate. I've had one of those in Spain. They're awful. No, it's not. It's a cool little car. Yeah, but it doesn't drive very well. You're joking. Football and cars. How pathetic is that? <laughs> no, and women. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure about this wind. Well, have, you, have you arranged for this wind just to annoy me? It's about your face. You had a bit of a punch up. I've had a bit of a punch up, yeah, with the clown. You've got a box. The word styling, when you're over 50, I think can wreak fear in your soul. But you know, it's a sort of prerequisite, really, isn't it? Of being a pop star. Got, yeah, but you're not a pop star, are you? Well, I don't know what you're supposed to I don't know what the fuck. Well, what would you call no, it? No, it's a prerequisite. No, but, no, yeah, but um, you know, I think the idea at our age is not to look like you've been styled, isn't it? Mm. You know, yes. you know what I mean? <laughs> not an ageing Burton dummy, you know what I mean? Glasses on or off? Off. 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 People want to see your face. Do you want to go right back to the wall? I'd like to go back to London. Get on with it, Jane, you're dragging the sound. Lovely. Yeah. So if you're kind of quite even space, that's quite nice. That feels good. Sit, that's all good. We've got to turn that way, John. Don't fall. Don't fall. Oh, man. No, go on, John. Stand like turn that turn. I'm standing like this. Stop it. It's going well, then. It doesn't stop him now. I'm just going. Yeah, that was his youth. Hello, man. Can I be in the photo? John, concentrate on the picture. I am mate. concentrating on the photo, right. John. Two, Lovely. One, two, three. Then should we do a kind of. No, no, no. Fuck <laughs> all that. Flies run down mine. Yeah, flies no, run down mine. <laughs> Thanks. Remember, if you're talking, the picture will look shit. Look great. Been amazing. Thanks. <laughs> no, George. He's not finished. He's not finished. No, no, no. I need a break from them. For some of John's behaviour, I just thought, come on, man, you know, you're nearly 60. Stop being an idiot. You know, let's just do this, you know. We're taking this to the world stage, you know, it's to be classy. It's just who he is, you know, and I can only take so much of it. I feel that we hit the wall two days ago, and it's been a very odd, like you said, it was an old coward day the other day, which it was really, just people sitting on the balcony sort of, Smoking cigarettes or just gaze. It was arch, I think. Is it was yeah, arch. People just sort of, you know, like not really knowing what to do when we're all together.
Please. <laughs> the glorious city of London. London. I like this side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You, you know, you know. Are you in a penthouse? You have a oh, probably. You there were many parties in many penthouses in the 80s. The whole of the 80s was a party in a penthouse. Concentration! My worst memories of Culture Club were photo sessions and video shoots. So this, this to me was quite a little... And they were all his fucking thoughts. It was all my <laughs> Are you uncomfortable yeah. generally in these situations? Well, I have been. Well, that, no, you're natural no, environment, is it? No, it's not. No, George thrives here. It's like mother, his mother hen comes out. Mother oh, hen? No. But you do, though. You get all mother. No, my Ziggy Stardust comes oh, out. Okay. My fucking mother No, but we are some of us. Get it right! <laughs> Whatever that thing is that makes him get up front and makes him dress up is the thing yeah. that comes shines here, you know? And meanwhile, we're making the music. We're making, we're making, oh, we're making the music making too? The music. On your own, of course. We're yeah. making the music. Yes, yeah, it's, it's so deluded. It comes up with a few words, so it's a bit of a genius. See you in fucking court. See you in court. Right, one, two, three. Sunny, dear. Oh, Sunny. Hi, Sunny. You're hot. It must be really hot. How's it been today seeing your dad all dressed up? Yeah, he looks great. Yeah, it's really exciting. He looks amazing. It makes me really happy. It was crazy, like, growing up, like, you know, kind of in this rock and roll, like, lifestyle I grew up in, and, you know, kind of like no supervision and pretty much madness from the age 14, like, onwards. Like, it was just growing up in, like, chaos. We used to party together, and, you know, it's kind of like we were just buddies for a long time but he's doing great now and I'm doing all right now so now it's really good he's a grandpa now you know it makes me really happy when I see him playing music and making music and being his element like I love it it's great fame does weird things it makes people very weird <laughs> I challenge anyone for it not to as expected, Culture Club were besieged by their fans outside the hotel and besieged by the press photographers inside. It was crazy. We couldn't get out of the theatre sometimes. It was scary stuff. And you become isolated, and when you become isolated, you lose touch with reality. And once you lose touch with reality, you, you, of course it changed you. It took me a long while to come to terms with that and move on from that in my life, to be quite honest. Winner for the best British group, Culture Club. It had mixed blessings being successful so young. The highs are high and the, and the lows were really low. It was around about the time that we were asked to do Live Aid, we noticed that George was not making proper decisions, which led to us not doing Live Aid in the end. It's one of the things that hurt me most about the band. We hadn't not worked for many years, and I think everyone had just had enough. And that's when we noticed that George was beginning to, to fall apart, beginning to, well, experiment with drugs, I guess. Well, it was funny, you know, he literally went from nothing to heroin in about three weeks. Seeing George descend into heroin addiction was probably, all, I mean, really, it was horrible. It was absolutely horrible. Horrible. George O'Dowd, he was greeted by scores of squealing fans as he arrived to face the magistrate and the music as well. He was found guilty of possession of heroin and he was fined 250 pounds, about $375 in U.S. money. When he came out of the courtroom, he told his fans he was sorry, and he urged them to learn from what happened to him. Well, that made me, I was off. I just, you know, I couldn't I didn't care about the band. People said, you can't do it, you know, the band will break up. I said, fuck it, I don't care, I don't want to be around this. I just did not want to be around that. Those couple of years after the band, all that, watching all that shit in the papers about George and kind of watching our legacy be destroyed in public, really, was kind of the low point for me. After you stopped working with Coast Club, what have you done in the interim? Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Writing songs for a while, producing for a while, then I got into doing music for commercials, then I got into doing TV stuff, then I got into becoming an international playboy, and that all, I got into that, it didn't go very well, and then, uh, you know, just madness. Most of the time, really, I've been um, being, you know, Mr. Dad. Ciao, morning! <laughs> Ciao, Paco. How was the game yesterday? It was good. It was... We got... We got work. What was the score? <laughs> we lost 4-1, but 2-0 both were pure jam. 
Oh, okay. What about your dad going on tour? Are you looking forward to seeing him? Um, stage? Obviously, it's nice that he's going back on tour, but I'm not really that excited about him on stage and, and things like that. It's just my dad. He, he takes me to and from matches. So um, it's more my teachers and, and my mates and uh, their parents kind of thing that, that are quite excited and come up to me. But I don't. I kind of miss that excitement, really, yeah. All right, make sure this... Uh... This documentary is the start of something instead of, uh, you know, you know what I'm saying, that Because you guys do this stuff every now and then, and I want to make sure you follow me more. Right. Perfect. Uh, <laughs> well put. Thank you. <laughs> All right, my yeah, darling. Bro. Come on. Like yes. We're going to go now. Love All right, you. Well, All right, see you Ciao, more. All right, ciao, more. I'll take it, I'll take it, I'll take it. The first time I ever heard house music was in the Paradise Garage and I was actually making a album with Culture Club and it was really overproduced and I sort of went to this club on the weekend and heard this amazing music and was like, oh my God, what we're doing so wrong. But it was too late, we were in the middle of it. And that record, record was a record called Set It Off by Scratch. This weekend I've got a gig in London on Friday and then I've got a gig in Rimini on Saturday. Then I go to Toronto, France, the beef firm, yeah. But all that travelling, does that in some way, is that an expense of other things in your life? You mean like sex? <laughs> <laughs> Dental appointments. But you're not at yeah. home a lot, so well, in terms of forging relationships and things like this, yeah. you think it gets in the way? I was talking about this the other day, that I used to have such a kind of... so much energy for the, for the, for the chase, you know, like, oh, you know, what's your star sign? <laughs> oh, I feel like we've met before. Yawn. You know, all that palaver, and I just can't be bothered. You know, I don't feel like I'm missing anything. OK, let's go. Right. Can we go somewhere other than this lobby? Because it's like, it's like non-stop. For some reason, I don't know, I think people engage very differently with, with famous people now. It's weird now. You know, if people know who you are, they'll come up and ask for a selfie or an autograph. You're, you know, if you're a reality star or you're a pop star or you're a footballer, it's like, oh, you know, you're famous, can I take a picture? It's not about you, it's about them. Don't be frightened. Are we ready? It's a joyous song. It's a song about a comedian. Yeah. <laughs> one, two, one, two, three, four. <laughs> Have you seen your dad play before? Yeah, when I was about five, I got home. He spent his whole life saying, what, what does my dad do, poor thing? <laughs> Playing with little bands and this. <laughs> it's all my kids are the same, that's what's going to be so good about this. By the time I got married and had my kids, we'd stopped. I mean, we'd stopped stopping. So this is really good, because when you actually see it like the O2 or something, it all makes sense. American. And I put him off the business forever, which is a good thing. <laughs> I'd be a lawyer or a doctor or something. <laughs> about how it should be done, how it shouldn't be done, and how you're not doing this right, and you're right. But Peg Leg's not here, so oh, yeah, you do it at home. Oh, right. oh, Peggy Mount's not here. So. <laughs> Peg Leg's not here, oh dear. Well, you know what I did was I kind of registered my disappointment and then I moved on. I just sent him an email saying, I'm disappointed that you're not coming. Because I don't know if you remember, maybe you filmed this, but he didn't really want to come anyway. So it seems a bit... Com I mean, I know he's have, he has to have knee, knee surgery and all of that, but it did seem a bit like he planned it, so he didn't have to go. <laughs> oh, my knee! Oh, my knee! I could possibly be there. Do you think that he didn't actually want to come? Not at all. No, it's ridiculous. No, he's really... When we were in Spain, his leg was really bad. I sympathise with him. I learnt quite a lot in, in Spain. You think you know it all, but you don't really, do you? You know, we're all different because we're older but underneath it all was still the same. So when those same things surface, it, it, it you know, it gets you a little bit, mm. <laughs> Okay. What a dump. By the way, Roy sends his love. Oh, don't ever do it. Poor Roy. Roy sends his love to you. It's the Roy, you, it's the Roy appreciation. Oh, poor Roy. To everyone. Oh. She, she didn't want to come. Said, no, she didn't want to come. No, you got to have the word. Hold on. 
He had to have the work. She's had a gammy knee for years. Yeah, I've got a gammy knee as well. Well, you yeah. Yeah, but anyway, Roy did need to do it. Is he, is he paid you a fiver to keep going on? No, Poor no. Roy. Basically, no. Roy's not here bossing everyone around and trying to call the shots. Michael, quick, it's a coup. No, 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 no. <laughs> anyway, all right, never mind. It's fine. You know what, at the end of the day, I was sitting there going, you know I was sitting... Do you, you know what, I've, learnt, I've learned not to hate you anymore. Why well, actually, you're lovely. It. Even when you, you, you piss me off, I'm I've lovely. learned not to hate you. It's got my name wrong as well. Joan. Joan Moist. That's like a bit filthy. Your kids are going to see this. Behave. They're my children. I don't go. I made sure. I know your children I... very well. Do you know, Babs used to go on about it. She's got the kids are going to be here anymore. Well, they find out about what happened. They watch that program. Watch it. You're right about it. Yeah. Gigi was like, and. Good. She's, she's quite excited about it, in fact. You know, something to talk about. Good. Well, I can fill her in the details. No, that's probably not. <laughs> You're sailing a bit close to the wind here, George. Right? Like when you Shut said... up! I'll kill you! <laughs> <laughs> when you said to the journalist, Oh, I smashed a part over George's head and he tried to set fire to me. I mean, that was like... But that's true. But that, no, I, you, I... you threw a plant pot from the first oh, floor and it would have killed me. And then you wouldn't come out, you would go, Dad, don't come in there. Fuck off, John. Fuck off, John. Oh, John. So but John, babe, 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 can I just say something? No, 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 can I say no, no, no. something? I could spend the next 20 years telling you stories about things you did. Cool, I don't no mind. No point. Don't my... tell journalists things like that. Well, it's better than saying you sniffed my, my mum was like, in the house why did you say that? Which is what you said. He's my mum, why did he say that? That's because that's Sorry about John. This. <laughs> why you he... said you sniff my bum like a dog in Hanson. Now, that would have been no, a much worse headline. That's true. Much I never said that. Headline. Like that. No, I did not. No, 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 I did not. Oh, yes, you did. OK, let me do what I said. I said, when you're around people, you sort of do the sniffy thing like dogs. I never said, and you said, you sniff my bum. No, I never said that. I didn't say you sniff my bum. I said animals go, no. Roy said, well, that's good, George, isn't it? Now they're going to write that you sniffed his bum in Hanson. That's what it was. That's bloody clever, George, isn't it? I'm leaving. Move on. <laughs> Sounds like Benny Hill. It's like Benny Hill with the sax, though, don't you think? We're going around to everyone going, don't mess this up, right? It's really important. Psychological games. <laughs> don't fuck this up. <laughs> don't fuck this up. John, yeah. don't fuck this up. Don't what? Don't fuck this up. I was going to say the same to you, actually. <laughs> you said it to everyone at the party. Do you think you're all ready to go? Guys, are we ready? He's, he keeps asking if I'm nervous. He's trying to make me edgy. <laughs> Now, the battlements of Edinburgh Castle have witnessed wars, sieges, murders and revolutions. But the tension and turmoil have changed and nothing compared to what our next guests have been through. Please welcome Mikey Craig, John Moss and Boy George is happening from Culture Club. They should give up. They aren't saying critics going after the battlers one and shoot the survivors. Don't. Move on. The 
Welcome to interesting times. Yes, George. George is change management in the midstream. Yeah, which is um, well, even even by George's standards, that's pretty impressive to create chaos. It's the first person I've ever met who actually has a kind of plan. The kind of music business that we know doesn't exist anymore. The sort of bog standard ways of doing things just are over. I needed someone who could see a bigger picture, and I found someone. We've almost got three sets of managers now managing the band. So you've got emails going round and round and round and round and round. And we got to the point where we almost lost a, a, an American tour. It's amazing that I'm actually here in this country. So, <laughs> so you knew you didn't come over then? No, because nothing was arranged. All I really want is to, to, to be able to go out and play new songs. I mean, thank God we've got the album in the bag. I think that's saved us, because we all believe in the record. Really, it's not that difficult, this, you know what I mean? We do it, we rehearse, we go out and play. It's just a question of whether you want drama or you don't want drama, you know? I personally go for the non-drama. But this is Culture Club. <laughs> it's supposed to get better. It's got fucking worse. <laughs> There were supposed to be some press interviews and things that have been cancelled. Okay, I'm just a drummer now. We're going to do interviews on the day of the show. No, so get ready two hours before you need to to, watch, to be on the news. It really wasn't like, I didn't cancel voting. <laughs> Shall we go, Marie? Shall we go, Georgie? Oh, we got you. Loved it, especially the new songs. It looks amazing and sounding amazing. It's fantastic. Very, very nice. Uh, it was a fantastic night, seriously. The dates are, are, are right. Yeah, we get there on the Monday, I think. Friday's Atlantic City, we fly out on Saturday. Uh, who knows what before? Who knows what's going to happen? Knows what we might don't know. Happen. Who knows what might happen? Leading's possible for January. <laughs> uh, signing a deal for a... Uh, Revlon. I don't think he quite understands rock and roll. We've got him out ten, ten revenue, 10 streams of revenue for George. There'll be this and that and this and that. You boys are what you know, you boys you know, 300 million is going to be worth you boys being in it, not in it. Right. But in a way, maybe that's a good thing. Uh, 
has it created divisions? Yeah, just suddenly us. having this new person in the mix when everything was sort of... No, it's kind of brought the three of us <laughs> very close together, actually. Well, you say the three of us, I mean, the three of you... Oh, divisions with George? Yeah. Well, no, George is a George, you know, but the three of us are now, you know, very much close together. <laughs> Glitzy. Oh, maybe by the second one. Nervous man. Okay, step one. I'm the only one singing live. You know, we don't do it like that anymore, so it's just a bit of a weird thing. And it's also really weird. It's just, you know what, it's, we just made a great new album that they could have easily found a dance to. I just thought we could have done Runaway Train. It would have been just as good as Comic Chameleon. I mean, I love it. I do it live. I've always done it live. It's kind of like a, what you call a fait accompli. Time for some brilliant music. Here with Comic Chameleon, it's Culture Club! <laughs> I wouldn't describe it as my finest musical moment. <laughs> I couldn't really hear anything. La 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 la. La la la. Um, no, I mean, you know, just I'm just I'm, I'm old. I'm very old. I'm very old. I suppose at the end of the day, the, the bottom line is done. So what's next? Some more coconut soup. That's what I want. <laughs> How are you, Mr. Hay? Recovering from the barrage of bad comments off the last I know, episode. I know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> the reviews for heaven, fantastic. You well, know, it was such a high great show. End. Everything was great. And then I think get in front of 12 million people and sort of lacklustre performance. I don't know if he was tired or sick or didn't want to do it. Was pissed off he had to do karma. But he was in a good mood all day. Yeah. I'm just oh, hoping no. he's okay. You know, okay, maybe that. physically I wasn't feeling very well. Um, you know, everybody's been going, has been wild about heaven. It was amazing. Yeah. And then to have that high and then come down to a low is it's a little bit worrying. An iconic band cancels their North American tour. band Culture Club has cancelled their North American and UK reunion tour after it was discovered Boy George has a vocal polyp. Doctors ordered the 53-year-old to stop singing, otherwise he'll need to undergo surgery. Boy George took to Facebook to apologize to his fans, saying, To say I am devastated barely touches how I feel. I know that those of you who love and support me will understand that this is a decision I just had to make. What did he say? What happened in there? There's been a bit of an improvement, um, but <laughs> I'm going to have to actually have some periods where I don't speak. 
that's going to be really challenging. <laughs> and did they give you any indication of when you can sing again? Well, he said it's one of those things. I need, um, you know, therapy. I need to have some therapy, which is what I'll do with this lady, and then we'll see. You know, it's not something that you can kind of measure. Do you know what I mean? He said there's been an improvement, so that's good news. But obviously, if I were to go out and start shouting and screaming and, you know, running around town, it probably would be a good idea. So, you know, I've got to recuperate. That's, I think that's the key, you know. Really, the last thing I should be doing right now is going to meet the fans, but I'll just try and keep quiet. <laughs> The band think that I'm just being difficult and selfish and blah, 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 blah. They want to go out and just do it, and I don't. But I'm not going to. I just want to do this properly. And sometimes, in order to do that, you have to be belligerent and fight people. That's what's happening right now. So what are their plans for you to go back out on the road? Not right now. Not right now. No. Where have you come from? Um, Singapore. I'm from, Singapore. <laughs> I'm from New York. Coming strictly, we just arrived today. Where have you two come from? From Italy. And so how did you feel when you heard that the dates were cancelled? I was very disappointed. Uh, we had the flights and the hotel, and uh, so you couldn't believe that it was cancelled. We just decided to come anyway because uh, we can't cancel the hotel and the flights. Because you've been a fan of George's a long time. Oh my god, since I was 13. Yeah, that's a long time and I'm 46 now, so yeah, that's, that's, that's quite a bit, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm in a cafe in Hampstead with a like, load of people that came to the shows. There's like one, two, there's about, there's a lot. I'm buying them chips. <laughs> it felt like a dream. It was like not real. It didn't really feel like we were really there. But... <laughs> right, everybody put their hands up. <laughs> we couldn't believe that having a conversation like friends. I never saw this article. Actually, quite a good picture. Well, yeah. of me. <laughs> the happy ending. <laughs> Love you, and I'm going. Au revoir. Bye bye. Safe travels. Happy tour. But so I'm going now. What's your thing? Yeah. Okay. Well, thanks for that. Really got on my nerves. Just want you to know. Please don't bother me again. Don't come around me again with your stupid camera. See you later. See you later. I'll meet you. We'll see each other next week. Yeah, yeah Monday, yeah? Right, love you. Bye. Bye, bye, bye. The common sense thing is if you sit down and talk about things, things sort of get resolved, or at least people know roughly where they are. Hello, Mikey. Do you want to meet up for a coffee on Saturday morning? All right, darling, I'll see you then. John, I just said to Mike, I'll have a coffee with him on Saturday morning if you want to join us. That's two down. One to go. <laughs>